Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to TNO as your host, Mr. Mocha Lover here. And we're playing as a beautiful Iberian nation. Last time we'd read about the disturbing news regarding the Accentia Agency. Uh, integration with the military might be relevant. And actually, the military really likes us. Or we can do administrative issues, clearly. Um, because of the corruption that might be within Accentia, let's try administrative issues clearly and see what that does. We're pretty neutral. we got a few comms to get through. Redirect military. Okay, sure, yeah. Increase resources by nine? Yeah, why not? Oh, army offensive gets a CNT. Okay, let's talk about this and talk about a couple comments. So basically, to get rid of these guys, what you have to do is lower everything they have. You have to lower their activity, supplies, and support to the point where they have nothing, and then you can strike at them. So that'd be really cool. It's not yet possible to destroy the CNT as a total cost to both weaken them and the strike their leadership is about 46 resources. However, once we do this, we decrease your supplies by four each, but not lower than two. It will lower our stability, but you know what? We'll wait a little bit, and we're almost done with our, actually our dam as well. 95% of the way there. That's really nice. Uh, reduce maintenance. Go ahead and do that. Cool. And the workers are still content. So, a couple of other comments. We're going to invest our points very soon. I just want to make sure that we get this thing done. Yeah. Uh, in three days, this will be done, which would be great. So, we'll see what happens. And... Okay, so it dropped. So, now it looks like we all need a total of 34 resources to destroy the CNT FAI. So, let's do that. So you just gotta lower, even though, due to the support of the terrorists consider, consisting of mostly diehard radicals, this action will have a severely diminished effect. Doesn't matter, you just gotta do it anyways. Until they're basically zero, or at least until this thing pops up. Good. 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 Got, look how many resources it takes, but now we can strike the CNT leadership. Nice. And, uh, let's see, let's see what happens. And now, credible allegations of AAS corruption. Oh boy. With such serious accusations, it was a good idea to wait a little more for a bit for more information, and over time, worrying implications have become dangerous certainties. While there are many unpleasant trends leaked by an unknown whistleblower, hinting at a trend of nepotism within the agency. Though the rate at which new information is leaked is almost unbearably slow, the leaks in question are verifiable, which has brought much more into question about the scope of the corruption than first anticipated. Is there anything new? Oh, Franco's popularity with the bureaucrats and perhaps the military may influence his success in dealing with the AAS. Maybe I should have done the military one then. Huh. Till every battle's won. Nigh on 30 years later, the anarchists of the CNT have finally accepted their defeat. Our ceaseless arrests, uh, uh, raids, and other policing actions have proven too much for the treacherous reds, and what few terrorists remain have been scattered to the winds. This has been our hardest won victory by far. Support for the anarcho syndicalist movement has never died in Catalonia, giving the traitors no shortage of refuge and material support. The workers of Barcelona were a partic particularly difficult obstacle to surmount in our pursuit of the CNT, but, but no task is beyond the capabilities of the AAS. Perhaps with their armed wing broken, the Catalan anarchists will see the futility of the cause and abandon it for good. The AAS is skeptical, but it's safe to say that one of the largest thorns in our side has finally, finally been removed. Absolute freedom is no better than chaos, and they have been disbanded. Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and... Probably the next one we're going to do might be the BTA. Or no, ETA. ETA is looking pretty weak. Oh, I want to make sure that their activity is pretty low. So activity determines the likelihood of an attack in the future. So maybe reduce by... Directly attacking their operations. I'm going to lower it by one more. I'm going to do it by one on each one, just so that the possibility of them attacking us gets lower. I think that'd be pretty good to do. Oh, and there goes Lutland, which is basically Oslin. Oh, Moscow autonomy, huh? Russia's looking looking okay, but AAS de officials deeply corrupt. Some time has passed, and in that period, even more evidence has come out to the actual day-to-day -day operations of the Accentia. Waiting time between the threads has been long and excruciating, but as time progressed, they became more and more substantial. Now there's a case to be made. Much of the evidence is not totally verifiable. But enough circumstantial pieces of evidence have come together to make much more than a coincidence. This is clearly something afoot, even if it is not as bad as accused. This is something to be taken very seriously, though. If we take the wrong steps, it could very well happen that any leads we have will be squandered under the foot or the boot of a corrupt official, covered up and prevented from reaching the higher-up eyes one way or another. More investigation is needed and needs to be determined where this investigation will be directed. It could be put towards the bureaucrats directly using force and coercion to force the information out of them. This could go badly, but is the best promise of results. Alternatively, more subversive methods could be applied to glean information from suspects. No matter the decision, it needs to be handled with tenderness. Threaten the bureaucrats. Due to Franco's popularity, he's able to directly threaten the bureaucrats, which will worsen the bureaucrats' opinion. Hmm... I don't want to hurt my relationship with the bureaucrats yet. We might need them later on, so... A less confrontational thing then, first. That's not a bad amount of guns. That's pretty good. Approaching the AS administration. The reports of the 
uh, agency corruption has been worrying. Even worse is the validity and the depth of in scope suggests that it can only deteriorate further as more information is recovered. To find out if this is the case, then that information must be acquired. The breakouts of the Accentia are the obvious choice, as they have the most profit to be gained from the siphoning funds and line the best position to carry out the schemes. They will be questioned and set away to find the truth. If our suspicions are correct, then it will be only a trifle to extract the conspiracy from this veil of secrecy. However, what if they aren't the masterminds? As soldiers are the only the arm of the military that carries out the plans, and the journals conceive them, then it is also possible that the bureaucrats are only soldiers in a war of deception. Though they may be expecting it, if we were to expand the investigation to their superiors, then it may be possible to cut the snake's head off, provided, of course, they are really involved. Question the ones in our sites. You know what? This is what I wanted to do. Let's expand the scope. We're going to question everything here, but we shall do the way the state works. The Iberian state has been a relatively functional institution for nearly two decades. Given the way that government operates, this is more of a miracle than an accomplishment. We have not collapsed in anarchy or seen the Union centered yet, but this is more of a result of dumb luck than our own competence. Who would want a country to run like this? We need to give our administration a good hard look. We need to cut back the slack, fix the problems, and straighten out a deeply corrupt government. Right now, it's no wonder that there was a battle of Barcelona. We are lucky, in fact, that something like this had not happened sooner. It's time for something serious, structural reforms, starting with our constitution, which is a good, good thing. And honestly, right now, we're going to get we're gonna expand our arms workshops, or, yeah, arms workshops. This is not Old World Blues. Uh, military factories, because we need more guns. Guns, 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 guns. As an American, what do we need? We need more guns. All right, cool. Uh, oh, tactical support, very nice. Super worker security, eh, kind of okay. Mm, we don't want to do any of this stuff, combating terrorism with Franco's popularity. No, thank you. And we're going to grab, or uh, we could grab that, but do we really need that right now? We're going to grab more output for now. It's only 5% more, but get more max factories in the state and better efficiency base, so not bad. Because we needed more guns, right? Guns, guns, guns. It was also recommended in an earlier video, or in this campaign, that I'd focus less on, like, resource extraction. Because the main thing we're always lacking is mostly fuel. We need a little bit of aluminum. And I guess chromium, too. But, and that's a huge but, we can always get stuff that we need from uh, the United States in terms of fuel. So, there you go. And unlikely, a voice speaks up. An unexpected happening has occurred, in which an unknown employee involved in the act uh, the agency military joint programs has come forward to deliver anonymous tips as a state as to the state of the partnership. While we believe he works for the Accentia, he has not provided an identity as to avoid a reprisal from superiors. The information he has provided has, cannot be verified, but appears to be consistent and suggests unfortunate implications for the state of the partnership. Given the depth of the information, it has been recommended that the superiors of the agency be alerted to this turn of events and the claims verified or rejected. Additionally, it can be used to question the extent of their involvement in the corruption that plagues the agency. This strategy may not be advisable, however, if as if they are really involved, then they would be alerted to a leak. Should they plug it, it would remove our best possible lead towards investigating the case. What's the plan? It's too risky. Raise the issue to the AAS higher ups. Ooh. Hmm. Question the extent of their involvement. Raise the issue. Uh. Let's do it anyways. Why not? Oh crap! SSLP Ray Television Studio. You know, I lowered their activity stuff, and they still attacked. Come on, seriously. Look, it's low. It's low. It's low. It's really low. You know, come on, man. So, Lisbon, in addition to being the capital city of Portugal, is also the location of the main broadcasting center for the Portuguese language version of the state-controlled news. Unlike the headquarters in Madrid, where the news was broadcast in Castilian Spanish, and the newsrooms filled with shouting and commotion, the Lisbon headquarters tended to be on the calmer side, at least until today. Nobody's sure how they managed to pull it off. Some claim that they were undercover agents working for the state news for months waiting for the right time. Others claim that they were recent converts to the cause. While the official Madrid line is that the terrorists impersonated low-level janitors and secretaries to infiltrate the building. Whatever the case... The building was overwhelmed with the sound of gunfire and terrified shrieks around 8 a.m., punctuated by the occasional splat and sickening thud. Iberia and soon did the role, but become very much aware of the FSLP terrorists who had taken control of the building and used their position to broadcast live on state TV for millions to see. There in the room littered with corpses and the miserable hunched over forms of terrified employees, a masked spokesperson for the terrorists delivered what was in effect of their manifesto. There was no bombastic nationalistic proclamations, nor was there any harshness to assume. The masked man delivered his gr the grievances to a live audience with a surprising lack of emotion, even as the demands turned into direct threats up on innocent lives. At some point, about 15 minutes in, the masked man and his cohorts decided they had said all that they needed to, and one last show of brutality executed all remaining employees on camera with a bullet to the head. By the time anti-separatist forces arrived, the terrorists had managed to make a clean getaway, leaving behind a newsroom in disarray and piles upon piles of corpses. If the manifesto is any indication, the FSOP will, does not plan on slowing up on these heinous acts until their demands for free protocol fully met. Put the country on high alert. Honestly, if they do stuff like that, you don't negotiate with terrorists. You just completely, like, publicly crucify them or something. Like, come on. I don't know how anyone will actually support that group like that. Like, that's just a bit too much, man. Like, come on. Let's be a little more reasonable. We're trying to enact reforms, but apparently they don't really care. But you know what? Deficit is not looking bad. It really ain't looking bad. You know, Portugal might have some problems right now, because all of Iberia does. But at least the deficit's not bad, and the GDP seems to be doing, you know, relatively okay. 
you know, 3.6 is not great. Oh, wait, debt went up by 5.4%. AAS rejects, god dang it, rejects claims. Allegations were provided to the administrators of that agency with proof to back it up. They were instructed to consult the records themselves to see if anything of the sort was true. If it was, then it was to be fixed and steps taken described. If not, then they were to prove they were not true. They were given three days to respond, much qu then quicker than three days. They bit back with flat-out rejection of these claims and called their validity into question, presenting records showing a much cleaner record than suspected. They conceded that there were some small inefficiencies, but nothing of the sort which was leveled against them. As well as they also called the legitimacy of the accuser into question, stating that an agent with something to hide probably did not have genuine allegations. Finally, it was added that while they were always free for further inquiries, it was requested that they be actual inquiries since these took large amounts of time and effort. Well, god dang it. Mm. That sucks. The way they say it works. The regime families. Let's do the judicial issue. So. Uh, if you were to look at the Iberian government, nothing better represents its horde state than the system of courts around the country. The compromise made to form Iberia put the judicial system into the state it is. Portugal's, Portuguese cannot be tried in Spanish courts, and the reverse is true as well. Regional courts can overrule one another, leading to entire cases and trials disputed because of some petty grievances between judges. Even worse, the federal courts have been rendered toothless, meaning that they cannot stop or even reign in their madness. What kind of system is that? It was created by the Cadillos, sure, but there's no way that this was what was intended. Justice and the rule of law are the most important things for a functioning state, and we have neither. The Cadillos must try once more to create a solid judicial court. And this time, leave nothing to chance. Pretty much. Matters of state. The constitutional debate has reached a new stage. The council now faces the question of how to reform the functions of the state. Even though no major changes will be made for sure, there are some matters that need to be configured to maximize efficiency. Not everything needs to changing, and it will be soon be the duty of the council to debate out exactly what needs to be done. Privately, the representatives assembled seem to generally dread the idea of a discussion on the diarchy, but Iberia's protectors seem prepared to do what they must. Here we go. Alright, so can we get any more? Oh, we can do the FSLP, but lowers our stability even further by three. We are unstable. God dang it. Ugh. Come on. Get more res- Why does it take so long to get more resources? That might be a bit too much in my opinion. That takes too long. Like, come on, man. Seriously? Uh, the total cost to weaken them in structural leadership is 48? Are you kidding me? Holy crap. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. That's too much. That's, that's too much, man. 48. Come on. That's too much. Uh, it is 66. We got all that done. Uh, we could probably get level 2, more fuel. Fuel gain from refiners actually would be pretty nice. Engineering, uh, 60, 70, mm, radar, mm, direct fire. Uh, light aircraft, how about we get some drop tanks? Drop tanks are really nice. So, interviews with the mid level administrators. If there's no tangible results from the examination of higher ranked officials, then it's appropriate to move up to the next step down the ladder. The mid level administrators, much larger in number, are certain to have at least one person who's aware of what's happening. If that one person can be found and the information brought out of them, then the entire audit could be flipped on its head. There's only one issue, and that is finding the man in question. Two methods have been determined, and each is roughly equal to one another, so final authority is needed to decide between them. The first method is to just take a group and bluntly inform them of what we want from them. We will lay out the allegations, present the evidence, and remind them of the consequences of this crime and how they may receive amnesty if they cooperate. While it runs the risk of galvanizing those interrogated into not speaking, by reminding them of the consequences, some of them may be more inclined to cooperate. A second option is to attempt a more subversive strategy. Instead of just asking directly to instead deceive the accused, we may get what we want out of them by using false circumstances and luring them into a mistake. Even though the whole thing is dependent on someone slipping up, it makes for something much more subtle than the alternative. Only the best will be put to it regardless, but which plan will be used? Lay out the allegations, don't lay all the cards on the table. Um, well, let's see. The bureaucrats lean towards Salazar. They don't really trust me that too much, but don't lay all the cards on the table for now. And it looks like we're almost done with this. Four days for attach the power plant to the grid, which is good. Oh, peace conference. There goes Latin. The pretense. Just asking if they're guilty or not will not probably not get too many to bite, even though all the other facets planned. Just the same, repeatedly asking almost pointless seemies, pointless seeming questions about the Accentia's functions will certainly not lure anyone in, but may make some some make some I can't speak. I'm sorry. It may make some suspicious. If they're suspicious, then they may be malicious and deceive us. Something that needs to be done to use to be justify the lure, and for that we will need to come up with a pretense. Since there's a routinely scheduled inspection coming up, it would be possible to replace the usual corrupt, ineffectual administrators that man it with loyal agents who would interrogate and bureaucrats about the minutia of daily operations in the Accentia. No one would know any better, and since it is only a small modification to what they are used to, they still may answer honestly, as it was already set up so that they do not compromise any of the information we need to know. Some may not fall for it, but others certainly will. Alternatively, though it may cost much more, would be to set up a celebration to commemorate their successes. This could be used as a front to ask them compromising questions, and for the promise of money, they will certainly fall for it. It'll be easy to set up, and if anything, the hardest hit will, the hardest thing we will be finding a victory for them to celebrate. Which plan do we put in place? A routine inspection, a celebration. Um, hmm. The pretense. Well, I mean, technically, we did destroy the CNT. Hopefully. So, hmm. Hmm. Oh, we can do that, but we can lower our stability some more, which I don't really want to do right now. 
It's a small thing. Let's do a routine inspection. Let's do that one. Betrayal of the old god. Hmm. Terrible. Hmm. Authoritarian democracy. I haven't checked out the, this stuff yet. Here's a few bureaucrats slip up. Okay. The Kirk clerk checked. I lifted and lifted a stack of papers, examining the desk beneath. He moved over to a cabinet, skimming through the contents. He takes a pen out of his clipboard and makes several broad gestures, followed by jotting something down. Finally, the man looks up, as if so suddenly noticing that there was someone else there. Well, Senor Manuel, looks like your workplace is in very good condition. Excellent job. He, sh he shuffles, shifting his glasses up with a finger. But we also need to make sure that you know how everything works. Don't take it personally. It's just that people can sometimes slip through the work crafts. I'm going to ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. The bureaucrat was uh, nothing if not cooperative, and he seemed very relaxed. Every question he responded to, the results were recorded, and to be compared later. Finally, do you mind telling me who your head of department is? Oh yes, it was the Marshal of Financing. What an easy question. Well, nothing seems to be wrong on the surface. We'll get the final results back to you. The man walked away, and as he made his way out of the building, he compared the responses he had hastily scribbled down on the clipboard. There was a Marshal, sure, but he didn't seem to see finances. Manuel wasn't in the financing department either. Something was up. I hope this gets more conclusive with the rest of the picture. Oh boy, we have a lead, guys! We have a lead! Ooh, that, yes, I like that. Ooh, actually, even though, maybe I should stop doing that, because we do need more output. And just hurt our output by 15%, which is not good. Alright, so down here, we're not done with the dam yet, because we have to build the monument. Which is the last thing we got to do. Because we're ne literally 99% of the way there. Come on! Come on! Ah, it's going to take another 200 god dang days. Jesus. Oof! A diarchy question. When Iberia was first created, both Cadillos had to make a few compromises, specifically a few compromises with each other. For all their advantages, one cannot top the other, nor did they want in the face, uh, two in the face of a seemingly imminent German invasion. It seemed like an oxymoron, a riddle you would use to puzzle someone. How do you have two people with total power heading the same state? It took much effort, but something was eventually devised. It's been a long time since, though. The times have since changed, and with it, the world, and the diarchy will likely need some changes as well. Neither Cadillo would lose their power, but that could that could never happen on their watch. But the system requires at least a cursory review. We must make sure it is up to the times. The justice problem. The councilman, a uh, short fellow with a bushy face, prepared a speech. Well, technically, it had been handed to him by Franco, but for all intents and purposes, it was his. It is a terrible issue with the modern Iberia that, for all its posturing as a unified country, it does not have a unified judiciary. The system is decentralized, and the regional courts uh, can run around as if they are independent. He quietly hoped that... That didn't seem too monotone. Iberia can only fill its pro promise of unity when all elements, all elements of the country are united as if they were never separate. Our courts are no different. Are there any questions? Someone, to his dread, had a question. How would we best integrate these courts? Centralization should only be attempted if I can ensure that it does not go poorly. Therefore, I want to hear your ideas on the matter. Oh, no. In an act of divine providence, someone was able to interject and answer the question, moving the pressure away from him. The debate was almost similar in nature, but the final consensus was that ultimately... Improved bureaucrats. Ooh, decentralized justice is fine. Ooh, we must centralize. Oh, why do you do this to me? Why do you do this to me? Ooh. Hmm. I think we will have to centralize justice apparatus so everything works similar across the board to get more reform. Oh, they're mostly sellers are line now. Confronting the agency leadership with the testimonies of those that slipped up behind us, we finally have a case to be put before the leadership of the agency. No longer with just the word of an anonymous bureaucrat. They will be forced to realize that this is an issue that they will have to deal with. On top of that, corroborated evidence proves, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that they are also involved, and we can use this as leverage. They will be forced to shape up or deal with Franco's wrath. Another meeting has been set with them, and they have no clue of what we have in store for them. As the day approaches, they wander into a trap, and they must soon realize that they have been outmaneuvered, and they are in check. The results of the meeting will surely go in our favor. Best of luck, Caldillo. Alright, so that really sucks The bureaucrats don't like us anymore. Uh, we can do that again, but, yeah. Let's see, there's 48. Cool. Yeah, I guess just, we'll see what happens. We only have 10 god dang resources. We need 35, 49. This is ridiculous. How many, we need so many resources. That's ridiculous. Ah. Like, you can't get enough. You just can't get enough. We are unstable. Hopefully it doesn't collapse. A lenient deal with the bureaucrats. Okay, well... It could be worse. The second meeting with the leadership of the agency was proceeded as planned. Up until Franco presented the corruption case against them. It did not go as planned, but that is merely because it went better. They were prepared to flippantly dismiss the case until Franco presented the evidence to them. From there, he explained in a very simple terms that there was a case and the fact that they lied about it did them no favors. There was going to be a deal left 
before he left, Franco explained, or else it would be hell to pay. This, the leadership did not feel the same way to them. The evidence was unsatisfactory. They thought much of it circumstantial, and many of the testimonies misinterpreted. Additionally, they did not think there was enough evidence to validify the circumstantial testimonies. Above all, they found that the problem Franco was presenting was nothing like what he had made it out to be. Regardless, they did concede that there was an issue, and that they would have to make a deal pledging to solve it. Their terms were lenient, and despite curbing the worst excesses, the rest would be free to run rapid, with no means left to convince them. Franco was forced to accept. No man could say you didn't try. Okay, how many resources do we have? Because this is getting ridiculous. One. Well, bad word. Bad, bad, bad word. That is not bueno. Whew. That, oh my goodness. That is so many supplies. Do they get more every single day? That'd be, no, that does not look like they do, which is good. Well, unless we do this again. Nope, they do not, which is good. That would be very unfair to us. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, redirect military resources? Oh, yeah, more, mm, more guns? Yeah, why not? I want to do the offensive, but... Mm. Alright, so let's take a look. I said I want to do ETA next. 49 versus 49 versus 35. The BTA is probably the weakest. We only have 20 resources. If we lower this by 4, 7, 4... But it won't, if we attack now, it won't go lower than 2. So really, that would be kind of a waste of... of uh, stability. That's what it is. The stability of the nation. So that would not be very good to do. Let's get some better artillery. We've been making crap artillery this entire time. Wow, that sucks. And Suarto Ku's Indonesian government. A strange times in a strange land. Very much so. Oh, oh, come on. Get some more funding. Come on. Come on. More, more, more. I will spend all the political power that I have. Get Just spend, spend, spend. Cool. The regime families. Even though any perfect government has no factions or cliques, every regular government has plenty. We're definitely no exception. Internal factions have been a constant presence ever since both regimes were established and they've remained uh, through the founding of the Union. We have deemed the groups the families of the state, and there are many, the party itself, army, church, and so on. Every group has their own power and influence, and while they are all ultimately sub subservient to the Caduillos, they can sell incidents in the government. Even though they are non-official, it would do some good to interfere with them, ever so slightly. If we balance their power, and broke up a few of the less useful cliques, it is a definite possibility that more could be squeezed out of them, or out of exploiting them. Cool. Yeah, I... I we need more bureaucrats, though. So. Oh, oh, you know what? Even though we slashed it before, I'm not going to slash it anymore, because we need more output. Because guns are not looking bad, but we got to make sure we get... 100 a day now. So, finally the judicial subject has arrived. The newest subject on the schedule is the status of the diarchy, the system under which Iberia accommodates both Cadillos. The atmosphere in a manner which no subject before had accomplished immediately grew reluctant. The agency representative was the first to speak up. Maybe we ought not to discuss that? We can do that, right? Salazar waved him off. No, I say we ought to discuss the matter. It's about high time we get something said. Of course, he looked over towards Renko with a particular glint in his eye. It'd be very disappointing if my colleague were to veto this discussion and stop our productive debate. What do you say, Franco? It's better not to do that. Well, we can reform it. It had come sooner or later. Good. Good, 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 good. Hey, S still struggling. Oh, God dang it. This will work in stability, increase activity, in which Salazar will attempt to do with Iberia's economic problems. Cool. There was a culture of sorts of corruption within the agency. It was almost encouraged to take money, keep quiet, and be content with their slice of a pie. This is not connected to a government agency, and so it barely functioned under the weight of its employees' own greed. This is where the Cadillo was forced to step in and attempt to resolve it. Even though he put he put the best of his deal-making ability to the test, it simply wasn't enough to create a sufficient arrangement. What was he was able to do was to arrange enough to stop the worst excesses of the agency and create something that was arguably functional, but it was unable to stop it entirely for the most part. The money crossed hands under the table, from government governmental coffers to the unhelpful clerks. There was no denying that what was in place worked vastly better than it did originally, but they did not mean much at all. Separatists were still able to move around the Byzantine system, but now they at least had to watch their feet a bit more closely. Now to you about what can we do now? So this is interesting, because we haven't heard from Salazar in quite a while, at least in, at least in my opinion. We had that one event, but if we can exchange this for Salazar's attempts, that'd be good. We lose political power, uh, but here we go. Due to the AS corruption scandal behind us, Salazar is working on directing the nation's collective focus towards restructuring its ever-struggling economy. In conjunction with the broader economic measures that will be taken in the future, the plan is restructure failing the plan is to restructure failing bureaucracies and implement targeted austerity measures in anticipation for the greater reforms that are coming. Despite the fact that Iberia's economy will be helped in the short term, making these decisions will doubtlessly make Salazar new enemies on the cross of Iberian society. Cool. Reduce military spending. Our chef Ooh. Our professional... Army professionals will most slowly begin to worsen. Ooh. No, 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 no. And we're not going to do that since the military is fully behind uh, Salazar. Franco. Uh, let's see. So basically, we can do whatever we want. It doesn't matter if we do the military, though. So... Dial back foreign aid, foreign leaders, Moroccan monarchy, the natives' opinions. Mostly Franco-aligned. 
Ooh, worsen regional national expenses will rise. Our GDP growth will increase a little bit. Uh, I know what I like. I know what I like. Like the pros and cons of diarchy. Of course, nobody wanted to start an argument over the diarchy. Not in front of the Caduios, but objective ground was necessary for discussion. To the end, they were provided a summary of the legal powers of the diarchy, the rulings and documents from where these powers came from, and were charged with figuring out the Byzantine web of bureaucracy. The men present, for the most part, agreed that the best way would be to assemble a list of pros and cons. The institution would say for sure, but figuring out where it succeeded and failed would be critical. And that actually so sounds like a very, very smart thing to do. Very, very well. Ah, I got those military factories done, which means our budget went to 704, so be it. Alright, so we got more guns, but you know what I want? Even more guns. Uh, one there. Uh, we're still building up more, like, infrastructure, but not nearly enough. Yeah, we're not building enough. Uh, we can build it down there, too. I know. Two more. Loads more. Cadillas begin to argue. One of the largest benefits of the diarchy is the increased cooperation between leaders, creating an apparatus where two people may respond to decisively to issues rather than one. Yes, the clerk looked at the Cadillas. Actually, Salazar said, the political apparatus does not encourage decisive interaction. Mark that off. In fact, I'd even say it goes, goes as far as is to hinder decisive action, even the tiniest thing to protect a country. Enough, you petty bastard Franco snap. It's enough that you groan and grumble over every little measure that doesn't coddle you like a damn child. I'm trying to get one good thing done, and all you can do is think about taking jabs at me. The two continue to bicker at this point, blind to the world beyond what could used to argue with the other. The council became one of the first external groups to see in all its glory the way in which the Cadillus cooperated. Everyone, except the two dictators, sat in silence, unable to muster the will to move or even stop watching the argument. The clerk himself shrank back, unwilling to be near the source of the yelling. At the moment, a thought came into his head. Shouldn't he try to, well, do something about this? Let them sort it out. Stop them before they go any farther. This seems like a bad option, but I want to take it. Yeah, stop them. Just stop, stop them. Because the, it could get worse and worse and worse, and we don't want that to happen. Hmm. 99% of the way there. Only 168 more days there. Oh my goodness. Ooh, expand quarterly funding. Yes. 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 29 resources. We need 51. We need 38. 52. I gotta destroy the FSLP. What they did there was just god awful and horrendous. They are the group that I, I must take out. Unstable, so be it. I will. Oh, there we go. Nice. Dial back foreign aid. Anything that could help me with GDP? Academic base? Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't want that. New source of income. Businessmen. Liberal democracy. Go after corporate tax avoidance? Small new source of income. Not bad. Ooh, cut bloating? Yeah, I... Ooh. Yeah, let's do that. Go after corporate tax avoidance. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, since we're going to focus on these guys anyways, this is currently five... Uh, it's probably won't be worth doing that. If it goes down by four, there'll still be three, so we can get raid supplies just a little bit. It costs us two. That's okay. That is the group I am going to go after first, because they're just god-awful. Orenberg, very good, very good. Wow, we actually lost a lot of political power so far. Not ideal. Really not ideal, but it's going to be about a new month, and we get just a little bit more manpower. Which is... They don't want to show me. There we go. Um, 300 a month. That's not much. Bloody times for Brittany, huh? Okay, well, good luck, guys. Good luck. Just like how we need luck. Cool. The administration of pyramid. We're why is it? Wait, hold on. The worst in the bureaucrat's opinion of Franco. Why Franco? Bureaucrat. Uh, what the heck? Um, I guess, you know. The system of governance devised by the Cadillos is very peculiar. Unique might be the better word. Each of the province of the country is represented equally. And they are part of two constituent countries, Portugal and Spain. They're both represented equally in the Union itself, which is the final say in many regards. However, there are issues within the system. A lack of adequately clear provisions, as well as some uncertain edu edge cases, have turned the administrative system into a hydra that is more inclined to smack its head together. A distinct lack of the harmony required to run a union like ours. Were we to clearly define what each level can and cannot do in relation to itself and the others, we could have the country run much better. Worse than the bureaucrats' opinion of Franco, which is fine with me, you know what, at that point. What we're going to do is we'll make sure the bureaucrats really love Salazar, and do the other focus, and then we'll come down and do this one. Cut bloating and bloated ministries. Cut spending. Families of the regime, the Cadillos. The first and most powerful clique in Iberia was the leaders. The Cadillos got this state, cooperating even when all pragmatic logic begs for a backstabbing treachery. They're capable, even as they age, uh, and the guiding hands have saved the entire peninsula from collapsing into a bloody anarchy. What in the world is there to fall for, for them? Yes, everything is good. Well, we'll see. How many more guns we got? Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Cut subsidies for Mark and Settlers. Yeah. Yeah. Money-wise? Hey, we made four million more dollars. Cool. Families of the regime, the military. 
At the right hand of the Caudillos is their enforcement arm, the military. Franco and the military have had a very productive relationship dating back decades. And although Salazar is not as familiar to the soldiers in general, he still has the same sense to usually defer to Franco on such matters. The military is very influential, and at no point allows Caudillos to forget that they can remove them from power. To this end, no action against them is necessary. It would be only create a conflict that the military has, has every chance of winning. They can make themselves irreplaceable, but not much else. Improves military opinion of Franco. Um, okay. I mean, they're already fully Franco aligned, so it doesn't even matter. So, whatever. Families of the regime, the church, favoring the cross over the sword, similarly acquainted with the Caudillos as the Catholic Church. It is an incredibly influential institu institution, holding total dominance over Iberian religion. It permeates all facets of life in some way, the centerpiece of a stage carefully constructed to accommodate it by the many rulers of Spain and Portugal. Because of its position, it's coincidentally a very important institution to keep loyal. The faith of the many, the many leads into believe the church, and if the church is friendly to us, then so will the congregations follow. Some would argue that this is not a good thing. There has been an argument about the influence of the church. Its monopolistic control over education, religion, and in many ways the thoughts of the faithful is too great. The same groups arguing that this proposal that the church's influence be checked, so that Iberia is not dependent on its loyalty. Of course, if they're not checked, then there's no reason to fret over their loyalty. Take away some of its power. Oh, why would we piss off the church? Why? We get subs... Oh, I see why. Subsidize higher education. Ooh. Limiting the influence of the church will make reformism stronger in the council. It remains untouched. Improve the church's opinion. Ooh. Uh, I, I want to take that one. I want to, but we got to take away some of its powers. I'm so sorry. Uh, actually, I, I'm not really sorry at all. No, I, I'm sorry, but... Eventually, we get to piss off the church members towards Salazar, so that's okay. It's okay in the end. It'll be totally okay. So, the party. A state, uh, unfortunately, cannot be run by only two people. They must delegate and give up shreds of their power to the lesser men so that the government, or the matter government, is not totally overwhelming. This is a plight of the Caudillos. In their age, they have to find other men to run matters that they can no longer perform. This is the foundation of the Union Nacional, the party which runs the Caudillos, or runs what the Caudillos cannot. Despite formerly being one group, anyone with any knowledge of it knows that there is far more than one group within the party. Reformists, technocrats, and hardliners are all just a few of the groups who are perpetually struggling with one another for the favor of the Caudillos. This factionalism is agitating as it hurts unity and harms Iberia as a whole through constant scheming. However, it also stops any of the groups from growing dominant and imposing the views on the state. Is the status quo preferable? Oh, Limiting factionalism and therefore restricting different points of views and what makes reformism weaker. Let them quarrel. Allowing different voices to be heard will expand reformists through the council. Ooh. Mmm. I don't think this is a good... Oh, it's not probably not good to do. I need more reform, though. I want more reform. 56 out of 100. That's not much, man. That is not much. So, those that remain. It'd be false to claim that Iberia has been politically stagnated throughout the years. The greatest example is perhaps the creation of the Union itself, and although there are many finer details that are overlooked. A few of these details are some of the smaller, less relevant families. The old Falangus, the Carlos, and the Monarchists are only a few of the groups that have slowly withered away to naught. Iberia killed them, though. They are irrelevant, minor, and assume that they are going to disappear, disappear in the next few years. In fact, the only reason they still exist is because they haven't re realized that they no longer exist. Well, that or intervention. The end of these groups is certain as others, equally disunited, disunited groups take their place. However, if we so desired, we could perform an euth euthanasia on the dying families as to make their deaths quicker. What will it be? I don't care. Whatever gives me more resources to fight terrorist scum. 27. You need 50. You need 51. Why is that so high now? Jesus. Uh, and their suffering? Make reformism stronger? Uh, letting the ghosts of the past haunt us? And the suffering, which sounds like it could actually uh, do some bad things for us later on, but you know, whatever. Come on, get the god dang damn done! How many uh, military actually? We're getting close. We're getting pretty close right there. That's pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie. So, the Portuguese Accensia headquarters attacked. God dang it! There's been a regional blackout on the surface of the Accensia in northern Portugal. Taking the men entirely by surprise, a terrorist group struck directly at the regional headquarters using firearms far more powerful than intelligence had suggested. Not only did they have such high grade weaponry, but they were capable of hiding their firepower under the watchful eye of the Accensia, too. Understandably, the agents present were not prepared for a separatist group to strike the anti-separatist forces at their own base of operations. The complex was designed around such an eventuality that these pre-built fortifications the separatist defeat was inevitable. They did not let this stop them, though. The fight they put up was reportedly fierce, with only one or two or three of the terrorists not fighting to the death. It would be fine if this didn't turn out to be a diversion. An unknown agent followed a group of separatists, access to the facilities, and they made off with the records, weaponry, and intelligence. As undercover agents are smothered out and deposed, raided with newfound data on them, the agency has been busy finding their leaking part. The upper half of Portugal will remain vulnerable until an audit is completed, the loose thread is cut, and new connections are established. God dang it. Are you kidding me? There's nothing I can do. There's literally nothing that we can do about this. This is stupid. This is so stupid. I... I just don't think we can crack down. It's we're still God dang, just go ahead. Army offensive. Doesn't matter. Oh wait, what? Oh 
Ooh, yeah, that should be that should happen. Yeah, that happened. Six days, two weeks, two months. Why does it take so long to get more funding? It's a government. That's why. I can answer my own goddamn questions. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do bureaucrats. Uh, I'll do that. Restrict religious tax exemptions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next up, we shall do bureaucratic audit. Bureaucracy is and always will be a precarious balancing act. If you have too little, the state will be par too paralyzed and cease to function. Should you have too much, you will have a bloated monster who is only capable of profiting off its own suffering. Eventually, both will collapse in on themselves. For everyone's sake, we cannot, we can, we cannot be either. How we are, however, the latter. When the union was first created, the root of all evil, it seems, it was the compromises made led to what we have now: a bloated monstrosity that chokes the life out of everything it touches. As part of recent governmental reforms, it would do no harm to give the bureaucracy its long overdue audit. There are many superfluous. Part, certainly, we had simply have to find out what needs to be rooted out. And if the bureaucrats don't like it, oh well. Tough. Tough nuts. Tough nuts. Alright, so since we cut them down a little bit more, can we cut them off? No, we need seven. All we need is seven more to cut them out. And the Russo that's finished ceasefire has been happened. Oh, that's cool. Good job, guys. Make sure you're not killing each other yet. Again. You will eventually, though. Cool. Let's do this. And... Uh, yeah, these some, some support stuff. That sounds like, kind of like fun. Yeah. Engineers, let's get some better anti-tank. Sixty-four thousand, not bad, not bad. Oh my goodness, I just want Spain or I Spain. I mean Iberia, Iberia. I mean to be okay. I just want Iberia to be okay. Is that too much to ask for? Good. Do it again. I thank God we have so many guns. Oh, that is so nice. I put so much, so much into guns. Oh, a billion already. Oh, that is not good. But can we cut down these goddamn terrorist scum? Yes, we can. Cut them down to size. They are terrorist scum, and they will be treated like it. How much more do we need? How much more? My god! How much more? Okay, whew! It costs five resources to perform this action. Let's get rid of these god dang Portuguese terrorists. Crucify them publicly. Green over red. While they might be the lesser partner in our union, Portugal has not been spared the scourge of terrorism. The communist god dang terrorist scum has relentlessly terrorized our Western brothers, killing hundreds in their bloody quest for a revolution. Now the hills and shores of fair Portugal are peaceful at last. After being driven from their urban hideouts, the FSLP fled into the countryside, taking up refuge in the wild places of the lands they sought to liberate. The Portuguese branch of the AS, however, has studied all their moves and learned their devious tricks. Come the final assault, there's nothing the Reds could do to escape justice. At long last, the green and red of the Portuguese flag can fly happily alongside that of Iberia. No longer do patriotic workers of the West need to fear being targeted as class traitors and collaborators. With this blow, Portugal is at last free from fear and class conflict. A victory not just for Portugal, but for the Union. Great. Woof! Oh, it is critically unstable. That is not ideal. Are you sure? Really? Because we just got it more stable right now. Oh, that is not ideal. That is so not ideal. Improved jet fighters. Let's get that. That seems like a good idea. Um, ooh, let's see. Cut back bloating ministries. We'll do that soon. Uh, oppose austerity on the Moroccan authority. Let's go and do that. Critically unstable. Yeah, I don't think so. I really don't think so once we destroy that terrorist threat. I hope we publicly showed everyone the remains of these, this goddamn communist terrorist scum. A oh, bureaucratic audit, very good. And the contemporary state. Finally, after an eternity of precise revision, the new draft of the governmental side of the Constitution is complete. As one compares the new with the old, the differences become much more drastic than they were during the drafting. As an old, antiquated system made during a totally different era has been torn down, the Almag... Al... Amal... I can't speak, I'm sorry. The amalgamation has been enslaved, and in its place a true government arises. The compromises that created the old state are no longer. We have, in essence, united a greater knot, forging or reforging the system into one Iberia, rather than two countries prepared to die on one another's arms. The Union shall face the 60s proudly a modern state, and improve Iberia's stability... For the love of God, please. Please, no more terror attacks for now. And, uh, ooh, we could raise some salary, but no, we good. Oh my goodness, we still have 190 days. That takes so long. We gotta get more funding. We only have three. We need 54 versus 39. Um, hmm. I'm gonna do this first. Uh, weaken them as much as possible. I don't want them to rise up against us. Now we have no resources. That's not good. Redoris is this? Silent majority. I see. Fully cells are aligned. Actually, that's okay for now. Let's go and cut spending and bloated ministries. That'd be good. 
Fully Salazar aligned for the colonial settlers. Foreign leaders lean towards Salazar, but the southern majority is mostly Franco. So that's not too bad. It got more political power too. That's actually not too bad too. Military spending. I think we're okay on military spending for now. I mean, we're investing so much into guns. 134 a day. That is nice stuff, man. That is some nice stuff. Still building up more infrastructure, the contemporary state, and we shall finish with approved. So, it is done. The government itself has taken to a new constitution with open arms. Even though the new brow, the brow beating of the Cadillos hasn't hurt, it seems they were just as relieved to have a reformed and functional state as the Cadillos themselves. With their approval, there is only one obstacle towards ratification, the final approval step. If it wasn't an obstacle, really, since it really wasn't one, since both the Cadillos were simply waiting for the opportunity. With everything in order, there's only time between Iberia and its modern future. There will be another, another battle. There will never be another battle with Barcelona, not while the Union stands with their new constitution. Great! But unfortunately, that's going to end today's episode there, just because I think this has gone long enough, and I might need to take a little break from this, from all the terrorist scum actions that have occurred. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We have taken out two, probably the two out of the four the strongest groups that we really want to get rid of, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new, even though by this time in this campaign, you're probably already subscribed. Uh, check out my Discord link if you haven't already, even though you might have already done that too. Regardless, thanks a lot for watching, and have a great rest of your day.